We went from this ooh, to this when dumping an unreleased, previously undiscovered Nintendo NES slash Famicom title. This is Fairyland Story, a Taito arcade port with a lot more history and mystery than initially meets the eye. This gem was discovered by Fenris Wolf Retro in an unsuspecting eBay lot. Look at this, full of random Famicom games and then bam, prototype. I, for one, would probably have not even noticed a prototype being mixed into this lot because unlike NES games here in the US, Famicom titles came in all sorts of different colors. Just to see a lot of them is very almost confusing to the eye because you get all sorts of colors, designs, etc. It would have been actually kind of hard for me to pinpoint the prototype in this particular case, but kudos to him, he found it. Now, it is not every day that you find an unreleased Famicom prototype, so we were adamant to get an accurate dump despite the issues that I alluded to a little bit earlier. However, before I discuss that, before I discuss the dumping process, let me tell you a little bit about the game itself. So it is a single screen platformer based on the arcade title of the same name from 1985. Our build is from 86. There is no actual fairies, but you do get to play as a witch who has the power to turn enemies into cake or cupcakes, maybe. You gotta push these cakes off platforms or transform the enemies mid jump to defeat them. Basically, you need to get those cakes to smash, which is a cute little, very satisfying animation. And there's quite a bit of challenge and fun to be had here. There are enemies that split off and multiply, baddies that will temporarily mimic the player character's movement, wizards that can fire back and shapeshift you, ghosts that can't be hit from behind and must be faced head on, plus extra points and power-ups scattered throughout. Here's a pro tip for you. Get the wing in stage three to level skip. I've noticed it tends not to appear if you kill the wizard. Generally, if you let him live long enough to multiply, the wing will appear. So if you want to explore beyond your skill level, wait a minute, try to survive, get the wing and float off. Or because this is a debug build, you can press select and level jump that way. Much easier. This port has a strange history as well. It was mentioned in the Japanese gaming press, but Obviously, nothing became of it. It was, it was canceled, as I've mentioned a million times by now. But thanks to the Giga Leak, which was a massive leak of internal Nintendo documents, we got lot check information from Nintendo of America from 1990. For those of you that are unaware, lot check is the process in which Nintendo evaluates the quality of games before committing to them. So if you are a publisher, you submit to lot check and you have to wait to get their approval. And then at that point, if you got the approval, you could, you know, manufacture your game, sell it, provide it for Nintendo's platform. So in 1990, four years after our build approximately, Fairyland Story was submitted to lot check and it received an abysmal <laughs> score, apparently. That's the rumor anyways. An absolutely terrible score, like the lowest they would give out. But it's a bit strange. We don't know if this is the same Fairyland story or not. So the version from Lot Check is 48 kilobytes large and is on a CN ROM, which is like the board that they use to house the game. Our version is half that size at 24 kilobytes and is on an N ROM, so different hardware. But our version only contains half the levels of the arcade and the 1990 version is double the size. So is the 1990 version, a beefed up all level experience of the same version, just a different build of the same game, or is it a completely different take on the Fairyland story by a different development team, totally separate from what we've found? We don't know, we can only speculate. Either way, that 1990 version is still at large. And as a side note, I am curious if the quality of the 1990 version was truly that bad, or if it was more of a sign of the times. So for example, this style of game is very reminiscent of early to mid eighties arcade style games. By 1990, we had kind of, as gamers, moved on. You know, there wasn't a lot in the style released after the 16-bit generation already got started, TurboGrafx-16, Genesis, etc. You know, obviously you have some stuff like Bubble Bobble 2 that was released uh, after 1990, but Bubble Bobble was also a more popular franchise, a more bankable franchise, etc. So I'm wondering, again, was it truly bad or was it just that Nintendo 
had grown tired of these style of games by that point and gave it a poor score. Don't know, just wondering. So let's go ahead and talk about the dumping process, which I generally hesitate to talk about in videos because I, I struggle to make it interesting, but here we go. So I have two pieces of hardware for dumping Famicom and NES titles. The first one I ever got was basically a bootlegging device I imported from China. And to be honest, this thing has actually given me really good results over the years. And it seemingly gave me a good result this time too, seemingly. At least in, in some emulators. But in other emulators, it was a digital hellscape of graphics. Turns out this bad boy was dumping the game data perfectly, but the header was like all wrong. And certain emulators like Messen, I think that's how it's pronounced, will just autocorrect the header for you and make it seem like you did a good job when in fact uh, your dump was garbage. So I also tried the INL Retro Dumper, which is sort of a um, kind of an all-in-one retro style dumper I've used a lot before for like SNES and Genesis stuff. Occasionally for NES. And although the graphics here were not as bad, <laughs> there's certainly something wrong. In fact, the owner of the cart also had one of these dumpers, uh, tried it, and got the same result, unfortunately. So actually, uh, tentatively, what we did was we took the good header that we got from the INL and the good game data we got from the other one and combined them to create a working ROM. But luckily, a team member by the name of Fiskbit stepped in and solved the issue with the INL Retro Dumper. Apparently, it had random bit flips from dumping too fast. I've never seen this happen before, but with the odd cart, occasionally it can be a thing. If your cart is particularly finicky or just hates you that day, it, it can happen. He actually went in and modified the script for dumping from an Enrom board and basically told it to dump very slowly, to take its time. And this solved the issue. It gave us a clean, workable dump that didn't have to be combined in any way. Now, the last thing I wanted to bring up today was the mystery of who developed this port. Now, there was an MSX computer port that was developed and published by Hot B, a now defunct gaming studio with a history of contract work. And the 1990 version that was submitted to Nintendo was submitted by Hot B, meaning they were the publisher of that particular title. But there really isn't any mention of a developer here. Not in the title screen, not in the code, nothing. However, it was noticed by Super Sleuth Calico that the title screen looks suspiciously similar to Kek and Pop, another title to NES arcade conversion. Same font too, which wasn't a font that was used in either arcade version. And looking at the startup code between the two titles, Fiskbit determined that they must have been done by the same developer. Many similarities here. So, the developer of Kek and Pop, I think that's how it's pronounced, was Tos. Also, I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't, I don't know. Uh, they are a somewhat secretive contract developer. My guess is that they were subcontracted out to work on this and their name was just left completely off of it. And again, this is speaking of our version, the 1986 version, we also have no idea who developed the 1990 version. If it was the same developer or completely different group. Don't know. So that's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and wanted to thank everybody who's listed on screen here for doing the research for this project. I was mostly just the monkey doing the dumping work and everybody on screen here did just so much research and made all of this possible. So really appreciate it. Uh, and of course, hope to see you all next time for the next video, everybody. And uh, until then, take care.